What I'm really interested in doing in my work is bringing these different modes of inquiry and different kinds of evidence into conversation with each other to see where they kind of overlap and connect, but then what are the disjunctures. So say in the current project um, on skin lighteners, I look a lot at the medical research that was done on their harmful effects, say starting really, um, some of it going back a little bit further to the 1930s, but a lot of it starting in the 1970s. And I'm interested in how the people producing that medical scholarship are thinking about skin lighteners as a medical problem, um, differed in their perspectives from, say, people who opposed it on political grounds, so black consciousness activists or black power activists, and to try to figure out where and where not those conversations m meet up. Um, so I would say that's a really common thread in my work. I'm interested in bringing very different kinds of sources together on the same topic to kind of figure out the different perspectives and the ways they have and have not been in conversation. Excellent. So in your work on skin lighteners, mm -hmm. and in particular looking at this, this growth of this consumer product and tracing it over time, I was just wondering if you could give a kind of overview of your central argument with skin lighteners and how that's largely shaped your book on the subject. Yeah, and it's interesting because um, sometimes I think that uh, when we work on these big projects, we actually really don't figure out our arguments till the end stages. Um, but I would say at this point, what I really see as the overarching argument of the book is the ways in which um, skin lighteners have very much been about race and processes of racial, racial formation but at the same time how they've been about and influenced by a whole bunch of other things that have moved with institutions of racism. So in particular, I think the project really draws to attention um, to the fact that it isn't just the political institutions of um, slavery and colonialism and apartheid and segregation that have shaped how, peering, uh, how um, people's everyday experiences of skin color, but rather it's also the, or not rather, but in addition, it's the collateral movement of things like consumer culture and visual media and these techno-medical developments that have also shaped those experiences as well.